Ready to go? Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Collingwood Rant. I'm Sly. And I'm fucking fuck fuck. I hang on, sing. Do you want to stop it? God, he had one job to introduce yourself. One job. Welcome to the Collingwood Rant. I'm Sly. And I'm two minutes older than the two hours I watched the end of that game with. Spook. What? Ah, <laughs> uh, Spook. What would you think of that game against Port Adelaide? I'm two hours older than the two minutes it took to watch the end of that game. Okay, so... Did I get the first one wrong? I don't know what you're on about. Um, I don't know what I'm on about. The best of times. Or the blurst of times. So... So what? One versus two. Built up as a blockbuster... Really competitive first quarter. For two quarters, they dominated us outside of a couple of little patches. Deplorable umpiring. Um, Are we going to cover that? Do oh, you think? Yeah, maybe. And then Barnstorm home in the last quarter to win a close one by a couple of points. What did you think of this game? How the fuck do we keep doing it? I oh, know. I think the craze building something special. and I think he said the lid's coming off. Is it? No. Um, no, look, I, the, the game was, was absolutely superb. I mean, there's no other way of looking at it. Um, well, actually, there is one way of looking at it. At three-quarter time, I genuinely thought um, they'd run over us. Um, what were they, three goals up at that Seven point? 17 points. That's three goals. Yeah. Um, it's actually 2.5. And, and I remember thinking that, that at this point, it wouldn't be a bad thing to lose because it reminds them they're mortal. We're coming into finals. It shows you've got some vulnerabilities that were exploited. Um, it gives you a base to work on. But then they pulled that out in the last quarter and you go, well, fuck, they are good. I, I thought they, we, they just don't stop fighting. No, I thought with Cumberton, I didn't think we'd overrun them given the, uh, the way the game had unfolded. And I know most of our games unfold this way. We have lapses for a couple of quarters or for the big parts of a couple of calls and become hard and we play a style and brand that you don't see or you haven't seen in the half hour or the hour before. So I thought we'd come at it and I'm surprised that we won. I thought, given it was wet and slippery, mm. I thought the one thing we really struggled with, we had a lot of sort of mids who were a little bit undersized and they were just getting bustled off the contest and they were also struggling to show the composure to actually deliver the ball with any efficiency. Um, I reckon it's no surprise that our best mids were the bigger guys like Pendleberry, who thought that was one of his better games oh, for a couple yeah. of years, actually. He was winding back the clock. Did you see him a quarter time? Yeah, he was actually winding it back. Uh, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> side one I thought was really good that when he got the ball, he generally sort of pulled back and found a little bit of space so he could deliver it with composure. I thought Mitchell sort of struggled to an extent. Adams really came into it the more it went on. The goal he I actually found interesting because there's a few contests where... I don't want to say he short-stepped them because that would imply he didn't want to take the contact. The way I was watching it, it felt like he was actually a little bit worried about the sort of contact he might deliver if he really hit a pack hard. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I saw it that you know, he'd been crook during the week and he was a little bit off colour. Um, he just... I, I actually think, yeah, Nick was quite well held and the goey was just not in his, his, his usual impactful self... Um, and they, they, you know, the Dacos one, you can look at the reasons quite simply. But the, the OE one, I mean, these two are your two main drivers. Um, the fact that we managed to win with those two on minimal output for three quarters was, was incredible. But I still think a lot of his downturn was due to that. You know, I don't think he looked like he was fully over whatever he had. That's just the way I saw it. But yours could be better. I don't know. No, no, no. I just like, there was a few times before he could have ran right into a player and he just sort of pulled up. And it was almost like he was conscious of what happened. Well, if he was feeling crook, he might have shat himself. Oh, well, I guess he just taken a lesson from the keys. <laughs> um, Alicia keys. And I mean, the other thing too is, in terms of the game, I mean, Nathan Murphy was sublime. Oh, he was brilliant. That, that first half, like the whole defensive unit was, was, was awesome. But he, but was, he was just fucking, yeah, he, was, he was incredible. He was just somewhere else. And like, um, I think Fly said after the, the game, it was his 50th. That, that flew under the radar. Um, 
that's some incredible composure for a bloke who's played 50 games and such. A, I mean, the, the, their attack was relentless yeah. for that first half. And he, he, you knew he, in the league contest, the impact of a contest, yep. Yep. he took a few really good marks. Um, thought some of his kicking was nice, whereas generally tends to be a bit of a, you know, higher than longer, some of his kicks. You know, and, and the other defenders, while they were um, repelling attacks, they weren't doing it with any great authority. They were just sort of constantly nullifying or negating what was happening. Whereas, you know, other times you get more just sort of jumping over packs and taking marks. And Noble I had one of the worst games I've seen him have. Uh, but, and Quain, or similarly, after the last few weeks, not a terrible game, but just wasn't as impactful. Uh, generally, you get these guys offering some counterattacks and, you know, uh, long kicking out of the fence and shit like that. And that just wasn't happening. It was just sort of, we were just holding on constantly. But yeah. Murphy was the one guy who actually showed, you know, and I'm not only just winning my position, I'm actually offering you, you know, the team something back to counterattack. Yeah, a lot of that was the pressure, though, that Port was bringing. I said it was relentless. I think when you just have that extra second or two to, to compose yourself and look for an option, um, we, we tend to send it out of the back line a lot more efficiently. But there was just a lot of um, blind bombing and panicking. Not panicking, but there's that sense of you've just got to move it quickly, quickly, quickly because they, they were just coming in waves. Well, I heard Murphy describe the pressure like a slap in the face. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So Kane Corns on footy classified defender. Are we going to that now? Yeah, let's just jump let's into just that jump now. Let's just jump straight into that now. He defended Willie, Roll- Willie Rioli and said that, you know, Murphy flopped. So he flailed and played it up. Dermot Brereton says something like, Nathan Murphy, you've been playing outside the rules by not letting your opponent get back on the ball. Jeez, is he the only one, Dermy? Wonder what Mason Cox would feel about that. Um, therefore, player code says you will deservedly copy your whack back. Really, there's a player code. Is, that, is, that, is there a subsection of that? Is there? Yeah, is it, yeah. You did the same with Caminiti, and he gave you plenty back, and you did it again last night. You're a recidivist in that regard. So when that happens, do not go down and stay on the ground. Did you see the footage you fuck with where he actually looked dazed? I think that's 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 probably the damning part of the thing. He did look genuinely, and I think he's you know the fact that he is clearly susceptible to, to concussion that impacts to the head, which I think, aren't they trying to get that out of the game? I, I've just read something Sometimes. a little bit about that. Um, the, 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 Depends who it is. If you're a Carlton it, player, you're allowed to do it. I think, you know, the, the, the thing is, like, if you know a particular bloke is prone to it, do you go for that? I don't think smacking someone in the head is, is, is nothing other than frowned upon by the AFL now. So to go out there and do it deliberately... Um, it's not a great look. So I think he's, um, at the time of uh, reading, he's copped two, two, two weeks, weeks. Yeah. which I imagine they'll appeal that and get it down to one. Um, yeah, it's not forceful impact or anything, but the fact is he, he's whacked him in the head. That's all that comes down to me, and this is what pisses me off. I mean, I was actually really proud of Matthew Lloyd who fucking called out Kane Collins on the footy classified, just going, you're seriously you're kidding that you're condoning this and excusing it. And this is all it comes down to. All these idiots like Bird and that who go, oh, Murphy acted and all that sort of shit. Whatever he did or didn't... He was acting. Yeah. He's an actor. But whatever he did or didn't, I don't think he did. All you're going to fucking draw the line as, did Rioli hit him in the head? Yes, that's it. That's all it is. You that's, stop there. That's the part you've got to be held accountable yeah. for. And, you know, they're sort of going, well, it was open hand. He hit him on the jaw, which is, you know, when boxers box, they actually go for the jaw and the chin because of the fucking impact it delivers to the brain. Um, so this, all this qualification of, like, with a Murphy... Um, invited it because he would not let Rioli run to back to the ball where for Murphy flailed and acted and, you know, um, dropped onto the ground and stayed there, which is all just a narrative that some fuckwits are perpetrate, uh, perpetuating. It doesn't matter. He's hit him in the head. Two weeks, you know, I mean, the Chief said it a few weeks ago, like something like that anyway behind the play. It should just be a fucking, like a big suspension. Mm-hmm. You know, and that shifts me like, even, yeah, doesn't matter who does it because I know Murphy sort of is jostling and all that too, but it's like, you know, if you want to get out, the, get rid of the like hits to the head and that, just stop it. The moment they fucking do any shit like that, there should be like penalties. But they're letting him do that, so things are going to slip you know, high enough, all that sort of stuff. But anyway, I actually probably think, though, in, in, in reflection, I think Kane Corns could be right. But for maybe um, Murphy should be, uh, he should probably get two weeks for uh, deliberately striking uh, Willie's open hand with his face. Yeah. And then staging, that'd be worth another couple of weeks, wouldn't it? Yeah. I saw at one point he was staging that bad that the Academy was handing him a gold statue off camera. Ah, well, you know, Willie sometimes plays angry. Maybe that's the Gatorade. Who knows? What, what does that mean? I didn't say anything. No. Um, you know, Gatorade has high sugar content. Maybe you should uh, get a code, code, code red like Willie Santiago. 
That's always the only I go. That's uh, a few good men. Did you, did you watch movies? Oh, no, yes. I thought yeah. you liked movies. You yeah. mentioned it once or twice. Yeah, a few good men is a movie about North Melbourne. Is it? Just a few. In the past tense. Yep. No. Uh, in terms of like McStay, so he's come back in the side. They've, they've basically, that side we played, the side we fielded, that was pretty much, you'd say, a best 22-23. Um, Jack Ginevan would be 24-25 right now. He had, he had a really good game in the VFL. Yeah, I, I did hear that. Yeah, yeah so... Didn't say any of it, I just heard it. I mean, again, Hill sort of had a quieter game, um, which I think, again, is smaller did player... Did he have the sound down down for a quieter game? Jeez, I'm having to explain a lot of things that's, to you today. Really, <laughs> really, is I, that beanie too tight? Big thumbs up to Kane Farrell. No one's mentioning this. It was apparently fine for him to push uh, Hill running full pace... Just as I was crossing the boundary line, push him in the back, which should have been a free, and catapult him over the fence. Yeah, that was good. okay. And no one's talking about that one. And Kane Farrell, you fucking flog. And then he hits Nick Dagos high. He ch- he has him in a headlock and he holds the headlock. Elliot runs in to sort of remonstrate and the umpire sends fucking Elliot off. Fucking hell. Seriously, the things that people pick and choose and ignore. Kane Farrell, you fucking had a, a, a shit game, probably because you're not that good a player, but you had a shit game and you did some really shit acts. There was um, there was a fair few tweets um, from from Port Adelaide supporters. So, Leo, I mean, we're not going to um, deny for a second here that none of them will ever be working for NASA, but they were saying that um, Nick ducked into that. When you see the footage, the act of ducking actually requires lowering of the body, running forward, and then having your head torn off doesn't constitute a duck, does it? No, I don't think it does. But... I think you've just sort of got to go down a little bit. That sort of implies that maybe your arc is heading towards the duck. But he was well and truly upright and, and collared. Well, Graham Corns complained that the Did Elliot he? Corns complained. Yeah. Is there a is it what, what what's fucking Christmas like at their place? <laughs> fucking this well, turkey's fucking dry, and that's the next conversation for seven days. Well, Graham Corns, I mean, he spends most of his time. Dude, but the turkey dry wouldn't be anything to do with Grandma no. Corns, would it? No. So Graham Corns. Spends most of his time entering Lance Henriksen lookalike contests. Entering Lance Henriksen, you could just stop there. <laughs> And so he's complained that the Elliot goal where he's come in and then sort of played on a little bit should have been called out of bounds because he played on while he was out of bounds. So well, he compared it to the, the Elliot Ali- 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 one. And look, yeah, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what the I've, fuck. I've heard a few things about Elliot. But the thing is, yeah, um, from Tosca. Um, <laughs> but you get a lot of the players doing that play on, that snap around when you're yep. out of bounds. And it's like, well, shouldn't that be the moment they take a step? Off the mark. Shouldn't that be out of bounds anyway? So I don't know what the fuck that rule is. But for any port people who'd be complaining about umpiring where you had that fucking the throw to Frankie Evans in the third quarter, opening the third quarter, he's just one-armed it, and four comical players have turned around and signaled to the umpire, and the umpire's just ignored it. I mean, what do you expect? There's only four of them out there. The two... Now, surely if there's four of them out there, have we covered this before? Then no matter where you are, let's say the bear is the player with the ball. It is he's standing on the ball. You can't see it, but trust us. Four of them. You're positioned at, at, at pretty much right angles, aren't you? Is it right angles? I, I failed maths. But you surely got coverage. And no matter where they are, where they position themselves, they should have a good... One of them has to have a clear view of the incident. Well, we You had, a, what, three or four Collingham players right off the fucking bat adamant. Well, that's what I was going to say. Moore wasn't even facing the play. He was, like, behind it. But he, he was smart enough to go, hang on, his arm's pinned to him. He's gotten rid of the ball. So how has he actually done that? So Moore's extrapolated because, you know, he has a brain. But these umpires are fucking like, oh, well, I didn't see it. So you have that. The Nick Dacos deliberate, I think, was deliberate because it was very bladed. He just sort of tapped it over. He should have just grabbed it and run over. But the two um, sockers that went out of bounds were called deliberate. And the one from McCreary who wasn't even facing the play and he turned around and just kicked it really quickly. And it's like, this deliberate rule is broken. How do you call that insufficient intent? No, it, it, it does your head. And look, I think you've got to actually respect the conditions to that night. Like, yeah. it was greasy, it's wet. Yeah, you can't have clean possession every single time. And you push to move it forward. You've gained some territory. It's not the end of the fucking world. If both sides are doing it and get away with it, no problem. But, I, but I, no, just to go back for a second, like, and, and this is why I think where the fucking rule confuses the fuck out of everyone. I don't know whether you watched the Footscray game um, Friday night game. or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe you're bored. 
Um, but there was an incident. The ball's gone in, and, and like it's in a pack situation, and, and uh, Ted Richards just fucking yeah, roosted yeah, the ball. That. He's kicked it, you know, like he's, he hasn't touched it. It's just to get it out of the fence. The ball bounced forty eight fucking times, took, it, took, it, took it at a right angle, and went across the line. And you've got you've you've, you've been done with the de- deliberate or insufficient yeah. intent as we go. And you think I could fucking try and recreate that one hundred and fifty times deliberately and never pull that off? Yeah, and you think that, that that doesn't warrant the 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 rule being activated for that? That should be just a throw in. And it's just be, it's become too fucking obsessive. Right, it's basically it. just the last man. And there's a few they didn't they didn't get pinged for. There was the one where Bobby Hill tackled, I can't remember the fucking. He dispossessed the guy in the half forward flank, dropped it. That wasn't paid. Then uh, the port teammate picked it up and Hills tackled him and he's just kicked it and it's got out of bounds. And it's like why isn't that you know oh, insufficient intent for for everyone that's paid? You can scratch your head with two. You know, and it's just ridiculous. It I mean, wasn't. I think it was Austin Nixon Nicholson was compl- uh, talking about it. And uh, Brian Taylor was going, well, what should the rule be? And he just said, Nicholson said just, well, I'm pretty sure it was him. But he said, well, you got to take into account, was it a skill error? Was it a quick kick? Because is there intent in that? you got to separate that from actual intent. And fucking like the McCreary one, he's just kicked it to drive it long as possible. Mm-hmm. As you wanted it going out, he's probably thinking, well, if it goes out, it's not a bad thing. But I'm also thinking if it stays in for him, he's probably thinking it's not a bad thing because he'll just fucking run onto it. This whole shit, you might as well just bring in last man who touches it, he's penalised. And it really is frustrating. Oh, it'll probably get to that point at some... Well, the AFLW does it that way, isn't it? It's the well, last, the VFL, last contact. Yeah, the VFL used to do that 90 years ago or something, 100 years ago. That's well, the way they used to play. Soccer does it, basketball does it, all the sports that, you know, it's the last... Well, pretty much not basketball, it's fucking lottery, depending on which way some arrow is pointing at the time. Um, but yeah, most... For sports where you carry the ball over the, the boundary yeah. line is you're penalised again. So it's inevitable we'll do that. For the sake of cleaning up the argument, whether it's a good or a bad thing. Oh, it's a terrible thing. Look, you know the bulk of the time when the player is intending to fucking send it out. He the, says so. The amount of <laughs> times... Run over the other side of the boundary line. That's where I'm kicking it. Well, it's like the Ted Richards one. It, you know, did he really want it to fucking go out? Like, it, you know, It's like the McCurry one. Like I said, he probably would have thought, well, if it goes out, it goes out. It's not such a bad thing. But has he actually just kicked it straight out? It's fucking taken that right turn. What if it took a left turn? Then what? His intent changed? Oh, that's Retrospectively? Yeah. <laughs> you re-qualify? Well, you mean turn to that one to stay in? Yeah. It's, it's subjective to that white line. The umpiring is really shit. I'm glad like people are starting to call it out, but it's been shit for years. But the deliberate one is like the ruck infringement where people know it's stupid, but the alpha just keeps stonewalling it so no one actually goes, well, let's challenge this any further. You just begin to accept it as a novelty well, of the fucking game. challenge it. Well, that's a ridiculous thing too, the descent. Fuck, anyway. Um... Or descent, I mean, how quickly is that fucking vanished? The Richmond game, um, I think there was there was, there was was a free against Rewild late in the game. Not that I saw a lot of this game. I saw, Welcome I did, to I the Richmond it. rant. And fucking, uh, yeah, Rewild's just turned around the umpire and he's fucking yeah. this and this and you're going... And like the commentator's going, well, yeah, any other day that's descent. But now it's okay. And but whereas fucking like the start of the season, you would have been shot for that. But the thing is, they'll still pay that one odd one, which just makes all the other... Well, that's def- why they're called odd ones. Yeah. So uh, it's really, really frustrating. Uh, so what's our boy best team look like? So Johnson got dropped, kicked six goals in two weeks. Uh, he doesn't have the... McStay will just keep competing, but I think Johnson's capable more of doing a little yeah. bit left field. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you look, their output's comparable. So McStay's what played... How many games this year? Oh, about seven. How many games? He's probably... Well, since he's come back, he's kicked two a game. Yeah. Yeah, Johnson comes in, he, he probably averages two to three. You're going to get similar results from the two of them. But I, I probably think on, on the limited viewing of McStay, he does attack the contest a lot more. The, 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 um, Ash has a habit of vanishing the, in a manner that makes Hoskin Elliott look uh, like, like, a, like an amateur. Well, does he walk back into the team, Hoskin Elliott, as a, just as a well, curiosity? Not, not from my perspective, but I, you, know, I, you sort of think that He's, he's stayed in long enough that you just don't forget he exists. He'll try and find a way to get him back in, probably at, um, at Oleg's expense. But then, you know, you're like, sorry, just to go no, off on a tangent saying. for a second. That, you, know, you had Fly saying they wanted to get Oleg into the game because of the, the leg speed yeah. and, the, and the run out of defence he brings. But Hoskin Elliott's never going to do that. No. So I think that there's a lot more merit in, in Oleg being in that side than, than Hoskin. I just don't see who... Hoskin displaces. Lipinski's probably the one that would be skating on a little bit of thin ice. Um, he hasn't been great consistently. 
He's had moments, but he hasn't really. What his been last quarter was better than the, you know, but he, he has been pretty struggling since he got back from injury. Yeah. So I, I, to me, I don't know. Did there be injury? Is it is it fit for need? What, what what's the the need for for Hoskin Elliott to come in? What does he provide apart from that one cameo goal? I think the thing with Hoskin Elliott is he runs the defensive lines, but uh, I think he offers them flexibility should there be in an injury. And then well, they can, that, I, that, that I agree with, yeah. You know, but can Markov do that? You know, I think maybe Markov can actually do that also, or even Jeremy Howe can do that. So Howe's another one too where I'd put a question mark over him. I'd really be looking at, like, when you if you're playing at Brisbane with the two key forwards, you know, Port Adelaide, Carlton, Geelong, you'd really want another, you know, tall defender in there. So at the moment, we're playing like that zone defence, so someone's always trying to provide the chop chop out and stuff like that but I mean that really worries me going forward I know you know people will say we're 17 and 2 would you take that would you take that I'll take it I'll take it so yeah so I don't know what the best balance is well I think we're going to find that out over the next few weeks there's going to have to be one or two changes depending on uh, matchups and stuff like that. So, look, I mean, you're looking at a, what have we got about a best 26, best 27 yeah. at the moment. You've, you've, unfortunately, there's going to be a couple of bikes that miss out come finals. But the thing is, like too. Unless, of course, we succumb to injuries. Well, let's hope we don't. Collingwood. The thing, though, if you look at the side, so you've got that 23 who played, and of the guys out, you have Ash Johnson, Kruger tentatively, Hoskin Elliott, and Ginnivan. I think they'd be the only others who could sort of come back in, you know. And the one thing... Well, they're not going to try McRae at this late stage. No. You know, so... And if they're taking Mitchell off, it's like, well, you're not going to bring in another in and under mid. But that's the thing I was going to say disappoints me, is there's no real sort of guy coming out of the ranks like an Ed Allen or, you know, whoever it was. Yeah, but I think I mean, Fly's been pretty set in his ways this year around not really wanting to introduce but that's anything what, for the sake of, yeah. you know, like, you know, you've, you've had two or three good weeks in the VFL. Generally, you get rewarded with a with a crack, but he's trying to stabilise something that's going to go all the way through to the end. But this is what I'm saying. I'm actually just, and this is not blaming any of the coaching staff or anyone there, but, like, I'm a little bit disappointed that there wasn't someone who who came up so hard that they had to look at someone like a Hosker now that go, okay, actually, there's a better alternative now. We're going to send you back down. So you get back to the 2010. You know, guys like McCaffer and Blair push their way in mm. at the expense of guys like Lockyer and O'Brien. And, that. and that's what I'm sort of saying. is It's a little bit disappointing that we're not really getting that pressure from the next generation. I think they're probably... They are providing a little bit of pressure. Like, Roscoe's getting raps a fair bit. Yeah. He talks up a number of players that he'd love to get in, but you can't. So well, Roscoe's got about 19 players in front yeah. of him. But that, but if you had, like, a really good... So, Roscoe's in a position where there's a lot of alternatives. Because you have, like, from Markov, Quain, or... Um, you know, there's a lot of guys at Maynard. There's a lot of guys who play that role. So, in terms of someone else like you know who might have been a dynamic wing or half forward or whatever anything like that you, we haven't really sort of had that sort of guy come up and like you go back to 210 Blair came in at the expense to, uh, to an extent of Methurst you know Methurst is an infinitely better player I mean Malthouse said that because Methurst is a better player but Blair played that role better yeah. so that's what I'm just saying is it's a little bit disappointing that we don't have that at, at the, round one I would have looked at the team and said okay who's going to push their way in and it hasn't really come from outside it's been sort of the I know they've brought in four or five recruits but I would have liked to see someone come in and do just a little bit more also and that's not to criticize any of the scenes I'm just as a natural attrition and evolution I would have liked the next generation to come in I guess in. yeah when you, when you got probably three quarters of the team absolutely nailing their spot and you're winning it is hard to bring trials in I guess Unless there is a, an injury to a specific role that you can't cross fill from a similar type on the side that you're going to bring someone in to, you know, like when Reef and that comes in and, and has a crack. Um, I don't think Reef's performances were any anything to write home about in the VFL, but there was a fit for need and then you, you came in for a couple of weeks and you vanished. But yeah, you really didn't do enough inside of that senior opportunity to demand to stay. Um, and then the person who needed to come back in came back from injury and you rolled him back in. But I think that, that's, as I said before, it's, it's just what Fly wants. He's pushing a particular side in his mind that he wants to get through. So what's the, the best side look like? Well, I think it's pretty close to the one that was out there on uh, Saturday so night. So it doesn't come back in? I, I don't think so, no. 
and Kruger and Johnson on the outer and Ginevan no, also. I think Johnson possibly because I mean we've seen that all year. Ginevan, I think he'd love to get back in, but I don't know whether Jin's done enough in VFL. And I think Jin actually has to get confidence back in himself. You know, we've, we've talked endlessly about you know I think the the mental impact. Yeah. Of, of the shit that's happening to him. I think he's been not left there to, to be punished or, or anything. It's just to sort probably some of those demons out to get him, uh, get his headspace right, that he can come back in and, and be, you know, what we saw he can, he's capable of being last year. I think, you know, maybe, you know, you, would you think Hill's in danger? No. No, I think one thing they really want in that forward arc is between McCreary and Hill, some genuine pace and pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, Ginevan... The intensity isn't that great when he's I'm not saying it's horrible or anything, but like, you know, McCreary and Hill just they're manic. You know, they hit packs hard or you know, hit tackles hard and they're really quick. They sort of come out of nowhere. Uh Jennifer doesn't really have that. That's not part of his game, you know. So I think they're safe. Um, the one I'd say would be at risk would be Cox if they decide to go for a more mobile forward line and have Johnson in there and then play Johnson next day in the ruck and then let um, you know Cameron do the bulk of it although I mean I keep saying I think Cox would be a lot better full time ruckman but uh, yeah. you know yeah. that's the one I think might be a little bit risky yeah I agree but I I, look, I, I like Cox because he, he's a physical player he sort of he uses his size none of those other guys do it McStay sort of might he's, but McStay doesn't have um, like Cox has genuine mongrel. There's a few times sort of he, he runs into marking contests and you can just sort of see he's got the attitude of a big guy. Like, if you're in my way, well, that's your problem. Yeah, no, I love that. Yeah. And I think you definitely need those those blokes who make people second guess. Yeah. Yeah, you get it from McCreary, you get it from Maynard and Cox. Yeah, I, I don't think you want to rob that equation because you're getting a nice spread across the ground with the three of them as, as, as people that... Um, you potentially hear footsteps when they're in the vicinity. Well, do you make anything of Mitchell being subbed? Uh, no, I think you know, Fly pretty much nailed it at the time that, um, like, I mean, Mitchell probably, yeah, his disposal efficiency was sitting around 20% there at one stage. Yeah. He just had, he wasn't having any impact. And I love Mitchell. I think, you know, I think the conditions maybe didn't suit him, that greasiness, his inside work. I mean, they were fumbly as all fuck for, for three quarters. And I think he sort of bore a lot of the brunt of that. Um, but you just needed to, to inject some fucking leg speed into that side and, and get some run out of defence, which is what Markov's bread and butter is at the moment. So I think it was just a... It ended up being a no-brainer. But he did say that they deliberated... that what, what was, well, was going to be a ruck or... Or a... Cox or somebody was coming out. Um, but, you know, look, it worked, you know. So, right call. I mean, the other thing, though, too, to look at is that lie set went off. Yeah. Late in the third quarter. And that sort of also coincided... Because he was... He's been out Bain, and I think once he went off, Cox and Cameron started getting some big man dominance. To a point, though, I think actually, because like um, Finlayson, he doesn't jump in the ruck contest, and staying down, I think he started to get a, a, a couple of uh, annoying usages out of the, the ruck contest, and we had to readjust. I think when they put Cameron, because like, Coxie jumps over yeah. him, so Finlayson was staying down, but when they put um, uh, Cameron up against him, it, it nullified because the camera doesn't jump. Um, either so um, yeah I would actually thought that actually because it, it got Finlayson into the game he, he'd done six degrees of fuck well, all had been up until uh, Lysette going off yeah yeah. so yeah anyway any final thoughts about this game uh, no look I think you know, in, in summary that was a really great indication of what finals is going to be like this year um, play and now I think again just to harp on it like every week the importance of us finishing first or second dictates a home final at the G week one and that's so important I wouldn't want to travel to, to Brisbane uh, to, to the Gabba to Brisbane, Brisbane. Uh, to the Gabba I wouldn't want to play the Gabba I, I wouldn't want to play over at fucking where are they played Moron Park what's it called for Football Park or um, where are we these days in Adelaide that that one that's in the city I don't know Cricket, the cricket ground I don't know what's it called Adelaide Oval no. oh, has it got a, has it, we got a I sponsor just Adelaide Oval it's more on more on land or something. I wouldn't insult the stupidity of um, uh, South Australians. Well, they haven't worked out the internet here yet. Have they? <laughs> well, they're on dial-up, so. Well, then we'll like this um, for them. Yeah, so that will be fine. No, I don't want to travel. So I think yeah, you know, like if if we played that game against Port at the G in the dry, 
I think we would have handled it a hell of a lot better than, than oh, I agree with that. I and think, that's, you know, come September when it's drier and we're playing at home, it's going to be a massive advantage for us. Dry. I, mean, I think the composition of the team does really suit dry weather football. Um, yeah. So, playing Carlton, they deferred the might of the West Coast Eagles. Yeah, they embarrassed them. But doesn't everyone? I mean, what the fuck do you do with West Coast? Has there been a more embarrassing fucking football club of late I was in trying the competition? To, I was trying to come up with something to mitigate the advantage that clubs get playing someone like West Coast twice. And I don't know if they just sort of bring in some sort of fucking cap or some shit, like where they go, you know what, we're just capping percentage now because you're getting the bonus from fucking... I mean, Carlton and Essendon... They play them 48 times this season. You know, and, and Carlton's beaten them by combined you know, 4,000 points. Imagine we were playing West Coast at the MCG next week. Yeah, we'd win comfortably. They're a fucking embarrassment. And Kane Corns has been saying this, so I'll give him credit. He's been saying this for a while. He goes, they're actually impacting the integrity of the competition because clubs that get to play them twice get an unfair advantage. He was talking about um, the Coleman Medal, which is an important award. But Kerno gets an advantage because he gets to play them twice and he's kicked fucking 19 goals in the two games and all that. They are so far fucked that the... And they should be fucked because they, you know, they created their own trouble. But... The AFL needs to work out how to actually mitigate the way they're damaging the integrity of the competition and the ladder and all that sort of stuff. It's a fucking job. I don't understand how you can be so uncompetitive. Even fucking North can occasionally turn up. Well, they're only competitive that once, which is mostly against us. And then, and then against the Kilda, they were sort of in the lead for about a half or some shit like that. But no, they're a fucking joke. And they lose, they've lost by you know over 10 goals a number of times. They lost by 100 points like three times or something this year. I, got, I, I looked at the scores. It was like fucking 86 to 16 or something at one stage. Yeah. And that was, I think, at half time. You know, what the fuck? I mean, seriously. It's like playing the midgets out there. Well, you, can't, you can't say midgets anymore. The under, under 10s or under 9s or something. You know what I mean? Well, it used to be a midget league when I played footy as a kid. Well, the under 10s would probably be at the height they should be for under 10s. So that wouldn't be... Well, what would they call them now? Height Challenge League? Would it be the Height Challenge I League? I'm not going anywhere near this. <laughs> the the, the not-so-tall people? Yeah, look, no, the AFL needs to work out a way. I mean, the, 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 the fucking... The draw is so unequal regardless because it always depends about who you play, where you play, and all that sort of shit, you know, and when you play. So it's the sort of thing like... You played a game at the NCG yesterday, you're dry Did river. I? And I go. You play today, you play in bloody wet shit. So it's all, unlike, you know, in the VFL days, everyone played on the same day. So you've effectively got pretty much the same conditions. It might vary if you go out to Wales or some shit. But this is bullshit. The NFL needs to work out how to fucking fix this. Um, I mean, I'd rather they just, everyone just plays each other once. Well, they should bring in some more sides, shouldn't they? So that we all play each other once. There'll be 400 sides. Well, at least that will sort of mitigate some of the fucking damage of the you know who plays who twice I mean because you play West Coast North Hawthorne twice I mean Hawthorne's been competitive but you play those sort of bottom four teams twice then that's pretty much eight wins you're going to get and that's you know two quarters or, or two thirds of the way to fucking making finals it's a joke mm. and meanwhile you know everybody playing yeah you know, just good teams or, or, or every week so I don't, I don't know we keep going into other teams Playing Carlton, so they smashed West Coast. Carlton got a few injuries out of that. Silvani, Knee, Walsh, Hammy. Are they uh, real injuries or are they uh, they're trying to psych us out? Why I don't they... follow any of the game. Why would they psych us out? I mean, it's not like... Carlton, they feel... Yeah, but it's not like fucking they're going to be sitting in the crowd and then the umpire's going to bounce the ball. They're going to jump over the fence and take their tracksuits off and go, no, we are playing. Come Thursday night, they've got to fucking name the team. So whether they're there or not there, you know, it's not bloody an American sitcom. Um, we'll know in four days we'll know if they're playing or not so there's no psychic to, it's not like McRae's sitting there going well they're out let's not do any planning for them whatsoever um, anyway so it'd be interesting how we come up from fucking that was a really tough game yeah, against Port in shit conditions that's going to be my concern on about how, days. how sore we are with a short turnaround when did, when did um, they played they played for us the, didn't they yeah so um, well they didn't really play because they they just went over there and had a kick Oh, it was against West Coast, so... The West Coast Witches Hats. So I doubt... I mean, the one thing with... Carl- West Coast Mannequins. Fuck, you... Man- mannequins are a lot harder than what West Coast are. The one thing I'll say about Carlton is they're smashed. They look really good when there's no pressure. So, <laughs> they do. Doesn't they, everyone? 
They've, they've, but that's what I'm saying. He's like, everyone's going their back. But who have they beaten? They've beaten Gold Coast two weeks before they sacked their coach. So there's obviously issues there already. They've smashed West Coast. We know they're a fucking basket case. They beat Hawthorne, who we know are up and down. Um, the good win was against Port, but Port rested like seven players that week. So obviously, fucking, they were just prepping for this week. So And that go for them. Yeah, well done, Port. Yeah, so, but that's the thing, is like, Carlton have shown when the pressure's less, they really fly. So, what happens next week, you know, when if we bring it, but the question is, how do we recover from that grueling game? That's the thing, and this, is, this will be Carlton's grand final. Yeah, well, it's Collingwood, so. Um, yeah, look, it's all going to come down to about, um, you know, how sore we are. We didn't get any injuries out of the game, which is fantastic. Uh, apart from my heart, it was fucked by the end of the game. I heard Murphy got slapped to the face. Did you? I heard the slap too. The world heard the slap. Yeah. I heard Willie Rioli said, take my fucking wife out of your... Oh, sorry. <laughs> out of your what? Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, take my if wife's name. His, 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 uh, his, um, his defence is going to be is he's trying to bring slapstick back into the game. Oh, Jesus, that's fucking horrible. Like he was there with a cane and a top hat at the end. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a cane corns. And a top hat. Do you know Graham? Hang on. Um, is, is he ever said anything positive, do you think? Graham Corns? Graham Corns. Was he, he'd be on a, some sort of defibrillator these days, wouldn't he? Was he about 109 years old? I don't know. Would they, would they just bring him out of cryogenic suspension? He'd be like Walt Disney. Is it just his head in a jar that gives quotes? I mean, it's amazing that like, he highlights one fucking incident. It's like, oh, good goal, but oh, his arm was bad both ways. It's like, it was bad for, against Conger for like three quarters. Well, and when he said it was bad both ways, I think he was just referring to every time that we changed ends. Oh, it's just, yeah, well, probably right. Anyway, uh, so what do you think? Um, I think Blues will beat us by 10 goals. What we'll, else do you we'll, think? We'll be, we'll be flat. I think if we're flat, we might. They, and it's their grand final. They might struggle, but we still should win. I'm interested in what McRae does with selection. If he rotates a few players out to just give others a bit of a he's, rest. He's, he's made that pretty clear he doesn't want to do it. It'd have to be really, really bad soreness on someone. But well, that, I don't anyone was proper or anything by the end of the no, game. No, well, it depends how they've pulled up from just, you know, really, because there's always the soreness now that they cite. So, you know, whether they say, let's give Ginnivan a couple of weeks and rest Hill for a week or two or whatever the case might be. So, I don't know. Maybe they'll look at that whole, because who's Carlton's rock? Do they still have one? So, uh, isn't it um, Mike Fitzpatrick? I think it is. Is it, is it Road Scholar? Well, he can't be. He ended up Carlton. Uh, How do you get so smart knowing a lot about roads? This is shockers. This is your fucking. Um... No one's paying for this. <laughs> you can't be guaranteed to get quality. Talk a lot of shit, you said. Uh, I think I've achieved that. Yeah. Uh, look, I... For who, years. Who's Carlton's driving? Pick a net or whoever the fuck it is? They, pick, pick a net. Yeah. Pick a net. Pick a net. I don't know. What's, what's his name? Uh, some tall bloke. Would they take that? No, yeah, I think they would. Yeah. They'd uh, take well, anything, apparently. With uh, the crisis, let's have a look at just playing one ruck, one genuine ruckman, and let's see if that gives us a bit more mobility and shit like that. The one thing right now, they got Elliot working really well. Yeah, was he kicked... Um... Three goals, three one, and yeah, but gave it's that 18, one like, 18 goals over the last three games. Or yeah, something like twenty over the last four. Yeah, yeah he's travelling beautifully. Yeah, so you don't want to mess up the forward balance too much. No, no, I don't think you'll you'll experiment too much there at the moment. I think he's so desperate to get McStay in and, and to stay in. No pun intended. Um, that you're not going to mess with that structure at all. Yeah, don't slap him then. No. All right. So tip. Ten goals. Um, yeah, ten goal loss to the Blues. Oh, cool. Calling about 24 points. Yeah, what 24? Why not? Why not? Fair enough. Um, you have a 99 options to take it. Final thoughts? Anything? Uh, no. No, I think I'm, I'm I'm pretty much spent. There's nothing else to add. Just a great fucking performance calling in the last quarter. Um, I mean, I, I just will deviate. I think we, we talked about it a little bit in Messenger. When it looked like potentially we're losing, we... My, my concern was at the time as well, we've lost three games this year to each to the top four teams. Yeah, you, know, you obviously, some of them are further back. Um, but they took it to them in the end and, and reversed my ability to make that statement. So the, the, one, on the one thing I'll say about that, and I don't like making excuses, but the Brisbane game was right after we lost both rucks and then we still had to ruck. 
And I don't think. And it's up there. Yeah. I mean, they, they're they're almost. It's like fucking playing Geelong at Cadinia Park. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not that we will ever do that, but again, yeah. It's yeah. clearly an advantage for certain sides to play in their own dung heap. Yeah, and the Melbourne game, there's obviously a few players compromised by virus. So, just those two games. Did they like, use Nortons? No. Uh, those two games fought. Well, okay. I don't like to make excuses, but there were you just reasons. made excuses. Yeah. Yeah, boy cares. Anyway, that's it from us. And that's eat from us. Eat from us. Eat from us. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Unless you see us next week. Later. Goodbye.